The planet is burning, all the easy money making pump and dump scams are collapsing, the human trafficking business is in a slump, and soon lab diamonds will be cheaper and pasta. So I think it's time for some escapism this brokey new year. And what better way to do this than to play some classic RPGs. This is my guide to the top RPGs of the early to mid 2000s. Enjoy. If you like hot female anime characters, cute animals, engaging RPG gameplay, and a vast, well-designed world, Tales is for you. And during this era, you have many options, but for me, the games that really define the modern Tales format that has persisted to this day begin with the 3D era. The first entry in this era, Tales of Symphonia, best played in the PS3 remaster format, combines perhaps the best story in the franchise with an engaging set of characters and challenging JRPG combat. The action-based, multi-line, linear motion battle system whew, is as challenging as it is thrilling. The only potential issues for new players are the graphics, which even in the HD remaster leaves much to be desired. Whereas Tales of the Abyss dramatically improves graphical fidelity, introduces a mysterious new world with great characters, in particular the main one, and improves in pretty much every single way. Want to feel the emotional highs and lows of a bright-eyed child exploring an uncharted world of mystery and wonder without TikTok? Well, play Dragon Quest. The PS2 entry, DQ8, has a way of recreating a sophisticated but pure, childlike wonder while providing a very compelling JRPG experience. The grinding could be improved on, and I'd recommend going down the HD PS2 route, but overall, it's a must-play. Oh Morrowind, how difficult but how fascinating. It's the sort of thing with an exceptionally high steep learning curve for new players because much like the real world, it's hard to figure out, vast and doesn't come with instructions. But that's what makes it great and fundamentally unique when compared to the checkpoint based navigational marker fests in newer Elder Scrolls titles and broadly the market. Now I'm not looking in with rose tinted glasses. As I said, Morrowind can often be frustrating to play if you're interested in spending time on other things like family, education, financial health, health. And there's a reason many of the streamlining innovations to AAA gaming were introduced, but it's a classic and doesn't look too bad when modded. Drum roll please for the honorable mention I pick, your mum, also known as Suikoden 1 and 2. Now what can I say about Suikoden? It's almost like the title was sent from the RPG gods themselves. It combines a sophisticated story about geopolitical struggle within a fully realised world and somehow manages to produce genuinely compelling characters with realistic motivations and challenges. On top of all of this, the gameplay is fantastic. Much like the story combining a higher level chessboard-like army battle tactics system and a more traditional group party battle with system. Plus, what more can I say about the art? In short, Suikoden is RPG perfection. Just heads up though, both titles are centered around this weird thing called the 108 Start of Destiny. And unless you're a hardcore old school lad, in other words, a masochist, checking out an online guide is your best bet. Let's move on to the corny shit, Final Fantasy. Everyone's probably seen it somewhere. I mean, fucking Kingdom Hearts, Tidus, sorry, Tedious, everywhere, but 10, as the first title of the Final Fantasy series in the 3D era has surprisingly solid graphics, exciting gameplay, and the occasional overabundance of cringe, melodrama, and whatever the fuck this is. <laughs> Please explain to me, is this cultural? Is this... The opposite can be said for its single player successor, Final Fantasy XII, which is in large part deathly serious and carries an ethereal romantic beauty that in some ways overshadows the inconsistent narrative. Both are best played on new gen hardware in their remaster form, with their respective HD updates not only improving graphics without compromising on the feel of the original, but also elevating game theory through much needed streamlining of the job system. Thank you. For me, Fire Emblem has always been a game in the purest sense. No lofty or sophisticated plot, 
with interesting characters, twists, and a realized world. But if you want stellar, tactical JRPG gameplay that is consistently challenging and stimulating without being repetitive, then you can't go wrong with a Fire Emblem. This definitely holds true for the 2000s entry Radiant Door and the amalgamation of the other ones that I can't even begin to remember. It won't dazzle the senses, nor will the story or characters leave a long lasting impression, but you will remember your achievements. When you beat that difficult level after hours of failed attempts, it will stick with you. Now, for our second honourable mention, we have something that I haven't played. I have seen it though. It's directed by the guy responsible for the stylish opening of Final Fantasy XII. Vagrant Story amps up the ethereal beauty of Final Fantasy XII without the aid of the more advanced graphics. I don't know how, but it somehow manages to captivate even to this day. Just look at it. If this doesn't captivate you, then nothing will. Pokemon, what can I say?